everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is Dr. Rhonda Glover-Reese. Dr. Reese, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. Of course, and you have such an impressive resume. You served in the FBI for over 30 years, and now you're a law enforcement coach. So you are the perfect expert for this story. I'm excited to get your expertise here on some big news. A former FBI informant was charged last week with, quote, making a false statement and, quote, creating a false and fictitious record, allegedly about claims regarding President Joe Biden and his family's business dealings. When you hear this, with your background in the FBI, what do you think we need to know? Well, you know, we really need to know the the reason behind the sources' efforts. So one of the things with working sources, sources have agendas. There are some sources that they want to provide information to get money. There are some sources that provide information because they just want to do good. But the key thing is to understand that sources have agendas. And sometimes it will take a while to really understand what their agenda is. And sometimes you may never understand what their agenda is. That's why it's so important to be very intentional about the information that you receive from that source. And when I was a street agent, I truly understood that you could, you, you can't trust sources. You just, you, you got to be very, very careful with working with sources and even trusting them. Can you walk us through the process of first finding a source, working a source, having that source be yours? What is this whole experience like? Well, it can be, it can be very daunting, particularly as a new agent. When a new agent is coming in, they understand immediately that they have to get sources. It's all part of that information cycle. You want to connect with people that have information that can assist you with opening cases. It can assist you in moving that case forward. And so it's a, you're really using your communication skills when you are looking to get a source. There are different ways that you can get a source. You can connect with a senior agent that has numerous sources and he or she just, you know, they're source heavy. They have too many sources to work because they have other cases. And so they may be interested in having you co-handle that source with them so they could pass that source on to you. So that's one way an individual would get a source, that uh, an agent can take a look at closed files of, a so of sources that have been closed because people operate sources differently. People engage sources differently and they communicate with them differently. So a source may have been closed because they, they weren't responsive to that agent. So that doesn't mean. No, go so, ahead. So that doesn't mean. Yeah, let me finish this one because this is yeah. good. So so that doesn't mean that that source wasn't any good. It may mean that that source just didn't like that agent. And so going to close files and looking to see whether there are, there are other sources available to connect with. That's one way of getting getting a source. I'm interested about what the barometer is here to judge a source. How do you know if a source is good, A, and B, the uh, the special counsel, counsel says that this informant uh, made false statements, was essentially lying. So when you're working a source, how do you parse through what they're saying and how do you tell, hey, that's a false statement and separating that from the truth? Well, first of all, I never trusted sources. And the agents that I worked with and agents that mentored me and my supervisor, you don't, you don't, you just don't, you don't trust them. You get the information, you write it up and you work it. You work that information, you dissect it, you vet it, and you work to see whether this information is credible. So you're not going in accepting that information. That's a bad way to go. 
you have to you you take the information you dissect it you do you do your due diligence to determine whether this is good information that can lead you to open it open a case or just lead you to different areas where you can you could talk to other agents about it you know hey i've got this information have you heard about this before or there's so many other things that you can do but the key thing is don't 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 trust them don't trust them that is a really interesting takeaway here that from the jump you're saying hey don't trust a source i don't trust a source this specific source was charged with making a false statement and creating a false and fictitious record are these serious charges or rather how serious are these charges well they're, they're very serious because this source was told many times don't lie don't lie to us because you you could go to jail for that you could get in trouble for that and so this source knew going in what what he was doing he knew exactly what he was doing he knew he was take he was taking a chance and 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 providing providing that information and so the 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 agents they did they did the work they looked to see what what was this information they were sharing and they were like no this is this isn't it isn't good everything we're seeing right now there he's been indicted so there's information that demonstrates that he was definitely not telling the truth. I am curious about how often something like this happens because you're saying you don't trust them a source at all, but how often are they lying to the FBI? Well, it's really it's really hard to say. It's really really hard to say when a source is lying. Uh, you, it, that's not any that's not the type of uh, information that I would be privy to. But I know that when I was on the street working sources, I knew that I had to be, you know, you had to trust. You could you could trust, but you had to verify. And that's the same thing. You just don't trust them. You had to verify the information that they provided. And if it didn't match up, you continue to have, you continue to open sources. You continue to get sources that are in alignment to what that other source is providing. And that's how you vet it. That's if you have a couple of sources, they're saying the same thing and those sources don't know one, they don't know one another. Then you start to think, okay, there might be something here. Let's keep going. Let's keep digging. Let's look at the intelligence that we have already. Let's have, let's have a conversation with our law enforcement partners to see what, what are they seeing? What what are they hearing out on the streets? What what what's what have they been exposed to? So there's so many ways that you can really take information and dissect it and just see whether it's making sense. But I, it goes back to you have to be very, very careful about obtaining information from sources and understand going in that they're not, they're not it, they're not adhering to the mission that you're adhering to. So the FBI's mission is to protect the American people and uphold the Constitution. That's not the source's mission. The source's mission is, it, it, is they just, they want to get paid. Most sources, they want to get paid. They know that they can get, get, get a few dollars and that's what they're doing. And then you're going to have some sources that say, you know, I don't want any money. I just want to share information. I, I, I love what the FBI is doing. I love what law enforcement is doing. And I'm seeing things out on the street that I just don't like. And I'm, 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 I'm hearing this, this information and I want to share it with you. But they want to be anonymous. They want to stay in the background. So so those are the those those are the nuances of 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 getting that source and really determining whether that information is solid or not
It sounds like there are a lot of nuances when it comes to sources, but this particular informant, Alexander Smirnov, he's been an informant with the FBI since 2010, reportedly. Does this compromise any and all other data, all other evidence, all other information that he's told the FBI over the past 14 years? Well, it's, it's going to have you do a side eye. It's going to have you take a hard look, but the information that he's provided and if it if it had opened up some cases and it got some cases started there were other things that the agents did in order to ensure that investigation was solid so again getting source information may may lead you into a direction you're not relying solely on that information so any cases that were opened prosecuted successfully prosecuted then they're going to they, chances are they're going to be looking they're going to be looking to see what okay what what cases were open and follow that trail but but chances are that information it was source information so there were other things that the agents developed that really opened that case not that source information that just kind of got there, got just got them thinking about things. It, it got them get let's move in this direction. OK, maybe we need to look over here. We need to do this before we can open up a case. Interesting. And um, in the announcement from special counsel David Weiss, he said this, quote, when he, meaning the informant, was interviewed by FBI agents in September 2023, Smirnov repeated some of his false claims, changed his story as to other of his claims, and promoted a new false narrative after he said he met with Russian officials. What do you think about foreign officials allegedly being involved? Does that make this even more serious? Of course. It really, really does, particularly when you have uh, nations that are interested in doing harm to the United States. They're, they, they are just looking to cause chaos. And so the, the FBI and other law enforcement agencies must be intentional and must be very, very careful about the information that they receive and just really do their due diligence to ensure that it, it is taking them in the direction that they want to go. Dr. Reese, the allegations from the informant, which were never verified by the FBI, are a critical detail in House Republicans' long-running probe turned impeachment inquiry into whether the president used his influence to aid his son's business dealings. What does this do to that inquiry now? Does it effectively kill it? It doesn't kill it. I mean, if, if, if they have additional information, then it could very well continue. But the information that their sources provide, provided, it's, it's clear that it was, it was not credible, it was not truthful, and it's not anything that should be used to go forward with. As someone who's been an agent, as someone who's worked with sources from first finding them all the way to fruition, what do you think then is missing from this conversation? How, you know, I'm, I'm curious how they, you know, how he came, how, how, how he was developed, how he was introduced. Um, so, you know, the backstory, what's the backstory of the source? I'm always curious. What's, what is, what is the backstory of the source? Where's the source coming from? And, and, and a, there's a lot of information that's being revealed about this source's background, his connections and um, his financial status. All of those things are, are coming out, but it's, the, it's, it's always understanding the agenda, understanding and being clear on what's, what, what do they want out of this? what's what's their what's their goal and in your experience have you ever seen a source be a good informant for years and then suddenly become less credible after well what i've what i've seen is that sources dry up they run hot and cold so 
one year they may be providing some really good information some really good intel that can really really help the help you understand what are the threats what's going on in the community what do, what do uh, uh, law enforcement what what does law enforcement need to look out for and then that source may dry up that source may lo no longer have access that source may decide you know what I don't want to do this anymore I, I, I just I just don't want to do it that source may decide that you know they no longer want to work with that agent you know that so so you so with sources you have to really really massage them really it's 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 a dance it's really connecting with that source getting to know that source you can't just call a source once a month and think that you're going to build that relationship and i know as a as a, as a as a as a supervisor and leader in the fbi before i retired i would tell the agents i worked with you have to build the relationship because as as a supervisor i had to make sure that they were engaging with these sources because if they weren't engaging with the sources they're not talking to the sources they're not getting the information and so if the agents are getting information from the source, then close the source or pass the source on to another agent who's willing to do the work to nurture that source, to get to know that source. Because you have to understand this is a this the source is a human being. And so you have to be engaged with them and they have to get to know you and you want to get to know them and that's how you really determine whether you feel comfortable with that information even though you have to be careful about their trust factor you still want to be comfortable with them you still want to be able to feel comfortable about the information that will that could take you into another direction Based on what you've seen from this story, from this FBI informant specifically, do you think the FBI agent should have closed this source? It's, you know, it's really, it's, it depends on the type of information that that source was, was given that, cause that source may have been providing some other information because you, you have some sources out there that have different types of access. They have access to drug information. They have access to white collar information. They have access to different violations. And so if, 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 you're, if you're, you're an agent and you've got a source that's providing different types of information, you want to keep that source open. And then you're going to, if you, if you are a criminal agent, you're working drug investigations and that source is a, uh, a national security source but they have this information on 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 drug matters then you're going to pass that information on you're not going to hold on to it you're going to pass it on dr rhonda glover reese thank you so much for lending your expertise here i really appreciate the time you are welcome back anytime thank you so much